Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Peter Chat, and today I'm gonna be talking about how to use Excel from from a very fundamental perspective. So I used Excel a lot, and I still use it a lot. I was a banking analyst for a year, and then I worked at a hedge fund for for about a decade, and so this is kind of basic hardcore um, Excel you know, principles and kind of setup and tips that uh, I'm providing here. Uh, this episode, I'm just going to talk about the basic, laying out the basic principles and then the way that I, I would do my setup in Excel. And you can use Excel for like everything, you know, you know, hedge fund analysts that are using it to build financial models and investing hundreds of millions and, and billions of dollars. They do that in Excel. If you want to do a budget, you can do that in Excel. If you want to calculate your taxes for the year, you can do that in Excel. Um, if you want to, you know, do, do any type of, of kind of list keeping, you can do that in Excel. And so it's it's a it's a pretty multifunctional tool, um, you know, pretty um, it's pretty basic. It can get it can, you can keep it really simple and really basic, or you can make it really complicated and have it do a lot of things by writing mac by writing macros, or doing really fun stuff with with tables. But for now, I'm just gonna break down some of the basics that I think would be applicable in almost every single case that you have, and then in later episodes I'll talk about shortcuts and different other different things you can do in Excel. So for today, I'm going to talk about the basic principles of Excel and how to get the most out of it. Now, the first one would be you want to use a keyboard as much as possible. You don't want to use a mouse because the mouse is, is extremely slow to use the mouse in Excel when you want to get places. It's much faster to use a keyboard. So you want to use a keyboard as much as possible and minima, minimalize uh, your use, minimize, I'm sorry, minimize the use of the mouse uh, when you're using Excel. Number two is use formulas whenever possible. And, th- and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain this um, a bit down down below, but the idea is you want to ultimately get to the point where you're building templates uh, for things that you can reuse over and over again. So let's go down to this example here. This is an example where we're calculating the volume and we're given length, width, heights, and then we're just multiplying those two numbers to get a volume. But let's say you just wanted to do it like one time. Let's say you wanted to do one times equals one times two times five, 10. So why not just do it like this? You know, well, why, why not just do the calculation all in one cell? And the reason is it doesn't tell you anything. It's just one random number kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. But if you, if you lay this out, this is the third point, you know, label so you don't get confused. If you label something out like this, you, you know what the inputs are and you know what, what you're doing to get to this result. So if you copy this, let's say you want to do, you know, more than just one volume calculation. Let's say you want to do like three. Now you kind of have a nice organized table where you can compare different volumes for different lengths, widths, and heights. I, I don't know what situation you might, you might, might encounter this, but let's say you're doing some, some, uh, you know, some, some, some optimization of a material that you have and trying to think about how to cut it up into certain usable pieces to get the most to get the most volume used out of that material. So if you use formulas whenever possible and you label it, you've effectively created like a you know a very simplistic template that you can copy and paste and then enter in new numbers to do different volume calculations. Now the fourth basic principle is I don't know if it's a principle, maybe it's also kind of kind of like a setup, but I think it's it's more like a principle is Hard code things in blue that you're gonna manually enter in. So something that you hard code is what what you would manually enter in. So I'm hard coding a one, a two, and a five. I manually enter in one, two, and five. Um, this is because when you get someone else's Excel, or even when you open up an Excel that you've created from a while back, and you want to like look at it again, you don't get confused. You know what you manually enter in, and you know what is driven by a formula. So the volume here is driven by the formula of multiplying three numbers linked to these three cells. So always hard code or manually enter in numbers in blue. You know, for labels like this, the volume calculation, the length, width, height, and volume here, you don't have to do it in blue um, because with with words, most of the time, it's probably not linked to something else. But you can do it in blue if you're going to end up reusing a lot of these labels all over in Excel, you actually want to just write it once, but link it, you know, multiple times. So four, always hard code in blue. Five is just save frequently, press control S to save. 
The reason is sometimes you Excel crashes or sometimes you make a mistake in a model that blows it up. Uh, we can kind of get to get to that in a, in a much later video, but basically control S just is a good habit to have to just press control S frequently so you don't lose work that you've done, especially if you've been working for like 30 minutes or an hour in Excel and then suddenly, you know, your computer like freezes or something. Um, you don't want to lose all the work that you just did in Excel. So press control S frequently. Now, basic setup. Turn off your scroll lock. If you turn on your scroll lock, when you press your, your like your navigational keys, your up, down, left to right, the whole page moves. But if you turn it off, you just you actually move up, down, left, right um, when you click those keys on your keyboard. Other thing is the other thing is turn on your number lock. If you don't turn on your number lock, the keypad um, on, a, on a big keyboard, if you, if you have a standard keyboard, it's just gonna move left, right, up, or down, depending on which numbers you, you, you press. Most of the time, I say 99.99% of the time when you're using Excel and you're using it to input like numbers and do calculations and to, to build models, you actually want to use the keypad because you can enter in numbers much, much, much more quickly there, much more efficiently. Uh, now getting to another, I think this is something that most people probably don't do, but if you are building full comprehensive, you know, models, financial models, and, and I think this is probably good for any situation when you're using Excel, is to, to understand how Excel is running calculations, you know, when you're doing things in Excel. So whenever you do something in Excel, like you enter in something and then you press enter, Excel is actually running a calculation based on what you just did. And sometimes it's calculating different parts of the Excel. And sometimes you can make it calculate only a certain portion of the Excel. So let's go to Alt F T, which is file options. Um, and then we can go into formulas to see what I'm talking about here, Alt F T. So if you go into Excel options, you go to formulas, Workbook calculation. See when automatic calculation is enabled, Excel recalculates the workbook automatically each time a value affecting a formula changes. Now, I choose automatic except for data tables because if you do automatic, it'll calculate your entire Excel every time you do anything. Even anytime you make any change in the Excel, Excel will recalculate the entire spreadsheet. If you have a lot of data, if you have a lot of data tables in your Excel, it's gonna make the Excel lag a lot. It's gonna be really slow. So I do automatic except for data tables. Old school guys do, do manual, which means that you have to press F9 pretty frequently to get a, re a refresh of what's, whatever's going on in Excel. And I think manual may have been popular for old school guys because computing power was, was pretty slow. And so probably when you're using Excel, it tended to, to slow, down, slow down your computer a lot more frequently even if you use automatic except for data tables. But I think now this is actually a pretty good balance. I don't like having to press F9 all the time. I feel like it's just a waste of a thing to do. Now in terms of like how often the calculations run, and this is for things that are requiring continual calculations. Maybe you have a closed, a closed formula where if you change a number, Excel will actually calculate it multiple times in order to get a precise you know, number, precise result. And so depending on how precise you want it to be, it can slow Excel down in doing the calculation. I just set it to 100 times, so the max, when I make a change and it needs to like calculate something that's, that, that's in a circular formula, I just want it to calculate at most 100 times. And the maximum change where it needs to be, keep recalculating is 0 0.001. And so this for me is actually a pretty important kind of basic setup that helps me have an Excel spreadsheet that runs pretty efficiently and um and it's a good balance of just being efficient fast and and also accurate so let's 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 click okay to get out of that now this is an optional one is to just pop out the f1 key on your keyboard because if you press the f1 key by mistake this help thing comes up and it's really slow it just takes like an extra like second or two for it to come up and it's a pain in the butt and as an analyst if you're using excel a lot or if you're just you know, on Excel and you need to like get a lot of work done in Excel, mistakenly pressing F1 a lot is a pain in the butt. So often whenever I get to uh, I get a new keyboard, I just manually 
pop out the F1 key so that I just don't ever end up using it. And quite frankly, I never ever use F1 key, like ever, when I'm using, uh, when I'm using the keyboard. Um, five is formatting numbers. So let's highlight the numbers and do control one. The standard that I format is I go to numbers and I do, I use a comma to separate and then I go down to either the fourth, the third or the fourth option. Um, you can pick the fourth option if you like negative numbers highlighted in red so that it stands out. And I do two decimal places, usually, not always. In this case, you can do two if you really need to know like to the second decimal place, but I'll do zero. You can do zero, one, or two is kind of my standard. Now, the reason for this is that, number one, it's aesthetically pleasing to have a little bit of space um, between the number and, and the end of the, and the right-hand end of the Excel. And the other thing is when you have like a negative number, it just lines up well. So, so the, the extra space, so you see right here, this extra space here to the right of the seven, it lines up with this bracket for the six, for the negative six. And so when you're looking at it like visually, it just more, it's more aesthetically pleasing to look at. I think it just helps you grasp the numbers a lot quicker. All right, so that's, well, this has actually gone longer than I thought it would, but so that's kind of my basic like principles for using Excel, as well as the basic setup that I would use for Excel. I know this seems really like randomly specific, but there's actually a good reason for this. Trust me on this, if you, if you just use these basic principles and you use this basic setup, it will make your future Excel usage that much more efficient, that much more accurate, and you'll actually enjoy doing it. And I think it will become a very powerful tool for you to use um, throughout life. Thank you guys, and I'll see you soon.